Hi, welcome to the first video of this channel. This is part one of a series where I'll explain and theorize about the storyline behind the mysterious game series Rusty Lake. The games came out in this order, but in terms of the timeline, Rusty Lake Paradise takes place first. Before going any further, obviously, huge spoiler warning if you haven't played the games yet. The game happens through the eyes of Jacob Islander, which is Dutch for Islander. It begins with him returning to Paradise, an island. It becomes clear that his mother Caroline died and now the island is cursed with the ten biblical plagues. What isn't immediately obvious is that his family killed her and sacrificed her memories to the lake and failed, so the only reason they've gotten Jacob to come is to use Jacob's like lineage or whatever and have him sacrifice the cubes, and this time it'll be accepted. Anyway, the year is 1796. There isn't much of a warm welcome as everyone's just ordering Jacob around. After Jacob enters paradise by giving his uncle a shrimp, he gains access to the rest of the island where he sees a hut where Jacob meets his father. There is also a painting showing all the family members' names, his brother David, his father Nicholas, his grandmother Margaret, his dead mother Caroline, and one character who hasn't appeared yet, his sister Elizabeth, and also himself, Jacob. Apparently the picture was from 15 years ago. Anyway, despite not having been at the island for a decade and a half, his father Nicholas doesn't greet him, instead he just says he's thirsty. It's like they just got Jacob to come here to be their servant. Anyway. Jacob has to squeeze four leeches' blood to unlock the key that lets him go further into the island, revealing Caroline's corrupted soul. Corrupted souls appear when black cubes are extracted from the dead body. Obviously, that's what happened to Caroline. Anyway, she tells Jacob to bring the memories to the lake and the lake will stop bleeding. Further on, Jacob finds a coffin in the lake with a black cube inside, which shows that, yes, the family sacrificed Caroline's memories. The memory then shows a memory of the family wearing animals' masks, sacrificing memories to the lake in the hopes of being enlightened. And this is Caroline's memory of it. I'm not entirely sure how Caroline saw this, but that's what happened. The point of this memory is to show the family were sacrificing cubes to become immortal. Anyway, Jacob sacrifices the memory in this building with a well, and this time it seems to be accepted and the water goes back to normal. Then the game progresses to the next plague, frogs. Both David and Gerard are obstructing Jacob's progress. David is spitting frogs and putting them in his pants, and Gerard, the uncle, has an important key. For some reason, Gerard swallows the key and then requests for some soup. Very rude. David says, You took my favorite plague, referring to water turning into blood, perhaps foreshadowing that he'll transform into a giant blood-sucking fly later on. Also, why are David and Gerard obstructing Jacob's progress? I thought they wanted him to find the cubes. Jacob also meets Elizabeth and it becomes quite apparent that she's blind. She probably had to sacrifice her sight to the lake or something of the sort. She says it's good to feel his presence again, then asks for a flute. But the strange part is that the characters don't ask for the times via speech. They just seem to think about the infantry items with thought bubbles, so it's hard to say if they are actually asking Jacob for all this stuff or if Jacob is doing it out of the kindness of his heart. Then, as Jacob stares at his reflection, he suddenly remembers a creepy guy in a deer mask who we later find out is Nicholas. Anyway, after making frog soup, Jacob gives it to Gerard who eats it and throws up the key into the bowl so Jacob can unlock the next memory. What's interesting is that the memory seems to be triggered by Margaret. She says, your mother used to sing you lullabies, and then the black cube is of Caroline singing a lullaby to Jacob, the baby. Timed correctly, it very much seems that this memory is triggered by what Margaret said. Your mother used to sing you lullabies. But there is something very interesting I'd like to point out here. The lullaby itself. Listen to the melody. It's the same tune as the melody that appears on almost all the songs in the game, like a light motif. After that slightly touching connection, Jacob must sacrifice the memory to the lake, ending the second plague and starting the third, gnats and lice. Jacob finds a Venus flytrap with four items. This causes a nice flower to sprout. 
I quite like how so far these three plagues have all been about collecting four items. In the first one it was leeches, the second one was frogs and this one is stuff a flytrap might eat. Jacob then uses an axe to chop down a tree and finds a hidden passage leading to a cavern of sorts with David sitting at a table. He says his blood sugar level is very low today. So Jacob gives him assorted sweet foods, causing a bunch of gnats to gather and swarm David, and interestingly, the gnat effect looks identical to the corrupted soul skin. The gnats seem to turn him into some sort of enormous cocoon which produces a flower bulb. Jacob plants the two flower bulbs which transform into flowers immediately, which seems very strange but has the usual video game logic to it. He takes them back to the cavern place, which has Caroline's picture in the back. However, the flowers have the side effect of causing a bunch of gnats to come and cover Caroline's eyes. And, producing a jump scare noise, the image of Caroline seems to briefly turn into a corrupted soul. It seems that these moths have something to do with corrupted souls. Like in Rusty Lake's channel's game trailer or something, it shows a black cube covered in moths, like the cube is made of moths. Well anyway, it seems that Jacob drops the picture in surprise, revealing the black cube that was behind it the entire time. Yes, it's the old treasure behind the painting trick. It's of the whole family posing for the portrait from Plague 1. Caroline's holding a rose, and then the petals of the rose come off, which is probably some symbolism or something. And then the memory ends. Anyway, so yeah, Jacob sacrifices the next cube and the gnats and lice plague ends. But before we move on to the next one, I have to mention something interesting. If you were to put a flower on the windowsill, a parrot will come. This parrot is important for later. Anyway, the next plague is flies. Well, it's just one fly, one giant fly. That cocoon has transformed David into a large blood-sucking fly. It becomes obvious that everyone is hiding from David, the human-sized blood-sucking fly. Margaret is hiding inside the cooking pot, perhaps a reference to the bathtub in Rusty Lake Hotel. Margaret says, go find your brother. The fact that Margaret wants Jacob to find David is interesting. His own grandmother wants him to die. Elizabeth is hiding in a puzzle box, and Gerard is hiding in a boarded up hole. But Jacob and David kill three animals together, Jacob literally crushing a bird with a rock. Also, inside a rabbit hole, a hand holding the Ace of Hearts appears, a reference to Mr. Rabbit's room in Rusty Lake Hotel. Also, why is David helping Jacob? I don't know. You can tell me your theories, but gosh, Jacob's really getting into the whole killing animals thing, huh? Then, Jacob sacrifices the three hearts to the Owl Totem from the First Plague, revealing an octagonal diamond that opens the doorway, leading to a secret set of stairs which reveals Nicholas. Another character who hasn't made an appearance since the First Plague. He is holding one of Caroline's memories and muttering, I need her memories, I need to find... Now, he doesn't say what he wants to find exactly, but it's obvious. Let me explain in a very summarized fashion. Basically, these people want to achieve immortality, and Caroline had hidden the secret in her memories, so they want to find it. Caroline's corrupted soul even appears to Jacob and says, don't let them use my memories. Caroline also has a book on the table with interesting diagrams revealing that with these immortality things, someone has to die. Anyway, Jacob opens the window and David flies in and sucks out Nicholas's blood so Jacob can take the cube. Let's see the memory this time. It is of Nicholas talking to Jacob. Nicholas tells Jacob, One day you will learn the true nature of sacrifice. This memory seems particularly traumatic and vivid, for it's the only memory that isn't slightly transparent and flickering. It's completely opaque, and it's not flickering whatsoever. Also, maybe this memory is here because Jacob feels guilty for killing three random animals just now. Anyway, Jacob sacrifices this memory too, ending the plague, ending the really nice music. We're now halfway through at the fifth plague, diseased livestock. This plague seems to take a break from the deep, creepy, disturbing stuff, as it's a more light-hearted, puzzle-based plague. Also, it's clear time is passing, as it's now autumn. Nicholas has somehow survived the fly attack. Who knows, maybe he's immortal. Anyway, Gerard wants a burger, despite the livestock being diseased. So Jacob goes around getting ingredients, giving them to Margaret, who chops them. Then Jacob cooks them. 
Jacob gets the meat in the most concerning way, stabbing the animal and just pulling out their meat with his bare hands. Wow. Jacob then makes the burger and gives them to Gerard, who just farts his way into the toilet. A reference to the toilet from Rusty Lake Hotel. Jacob gives Gerard Nicholas's bandages as toilet paper and Gerard vanishes. Within the poo in the toilet is the black cube. So I guess the meat was diseased with the cube itself. And the memory shows Caroline in her secret lair using chalk to do some equations on the elixir. And yes, in all the memories so far, one of the elements of the elixir have been in them. This time, it's chalk. Anyway, Jacob makes his way to the church chapel place and finds a boar. Who knows, the boar could be Gerard or just some foreshadowing. And that is the end of the fifth plague, a short, fun chapter to contrast from the rest of the dark stuff. Anyway, the sixth plague, boils. This is a direct continuation from the fifth plague. The story is, I guess, Gerard got food poisoning from the diseased burger, and now he has boils. Also, sadly, the goat which produced the bacon is now dead and is a skull, which can still chew for some reason. In fact, the island appears to be in quarantine so people don't get infected. And when opening the slot hole thingy in the door, a plague doctor appears, asking for a vial of blood, which Jacob gives. Then he can enter. In the hut, Gerard is lying there, diseased, and Margaret is sitting next to him, muttering proverbs that are hints. Jacob does the same thing as he did with the animals in the previous plague. He stabs Gerard in the chest with a knife and easily just removes the heart. Then he makes the medicine out of Margaret's bodily fluids and gives it to Gerard. He doesn't wake up as his heart has been removed. As time can heal a broken heart, Jacob goes upstairs and finds a broken clock. Jacob puts Gerard's heart in the clock and it somehow starts working. Then Jacob stuffs the clockwork inside Gerard's chest and sews it back up and Gerard has made full recovery. Gerard says his next word, boar, hinting he is Mr. Boar. Boar is also the code to the box inside the clock and there is a black cube inside the box inside the clock and this memory is a disturbing one. It seems to have been triggered by Jacob holding that heart for basically the entirety of the plague. It shows Nicholas again trying to convert Jacob to the sacrificing tribe family thing. Jacob has been dressed just like Nicholas, who I suppose is the leader. I guess it's because Nicholas is the leader and Jacob is the eldest son, so when Nicholas dies, Jacob is meant to take his place or whatever. Anyway, Nicholas is holding a heart and is letting the blood drip onto Jacob. And Nicholas says an interesting quote, which is, Paradise would not exist without great sacrifice. That's the memory in its entirety. How did Jacob forget about all this? Maybe it's the thing the brain does where something's so traumatic it forgets about it. Anyway, so ends the sixth plague and next is the seventh plague, hail. Now, this one isn't a plague. It's literally just winter time. There's snow everywhere and the lake is frozen. Also, David is a human again and it looks like the family threw him into the frozen lake to purify his soul. Anyway, so Jacob finds the snow globe that gives him the ability to make rocks rain down from the sky. And he also kills a squirrel with an icicle, which is concerning. Then he makes a snowman, but the weird thing is, once the snowman has been built, a weird puzzle happens. And then it is revealed that Margaret was inside this whole time. Honestly, I have no idea why. And there's also a diamond inside her mouth. Very weird. Speaking of weird things, there's a hammer inside the well and when Jacob breaks the ice in the well, a hand reaches out. Like, for me, I think it's just an easter egg that doesn't mean anything, but it could mean something, I don't know. Jacob uses a hammer and chisel to get David out of the ice too and he doesn't seem that thankful or anything. Then Jacob uses the diamond to power the snow globe even more and as he looks at the well place he feels an unexplainable urge to destroy it. And then he does destroy the entire roof of the place and this box containing a black cube just materializes. The memory itself is a concerning one. Nicholas is trying to drown Jacob, I guess because Jacob refused the offer of being part of the tribe. Nicholas says that Jacob is ready to meet his destiny and is lowering Jacob in the golden cage into the well, which is the same way the black cubes are sacrifices, but something I think is intentional. The wings from the gold box that the cubes go in is overlapping his memory, making it look as though Jacob has wings. I think this has happened on purpose, I really do. And here is where Caroline's fate becomes obvious. Don't. Take me instead. 
I suppose them killing Caroline was like accomplishing two things. They wanted to kill her not only because of what happened with Jacob, but also so that they could sacrifice her black cubes and become enlightened. Yep, so that's it. Time for the eighth plague, locusts. At the start, Jacob, Gerard and Nicholas are singing a funny song, but then it quickly becomes creepy. The island is weird and foggy, perhaps foreshadowing this. Anyway, there is this locust that lays an egg that produces this giant monster thingy. I don't even know what it is. How did this happen? Is it something to do with the fog being magical? Elizabeth is in the hut with the words, the owls are not what they seem, written on the wall. I think it's some reference to the show Twin Peaks. I've never actually watched Twin Peaks, so I don't know. Also, the goat has come back to life. The fog must be from the lake and has magical powers, and now its magical powers are mutating stuff. Sadly, very soon, the giant locust thingy has appeared and kills the goat. Anyway, back to Elizabeth. She says, eyes blinded by the fog cannot see the truth. What is the truth? Just some puzzle solutions plus a firefly jump scare? <laughs> Jacob gives the owl the firefly before the giant locust comes again. The owl is clever and flies away instead of getting killed. Symbolism! At the edge of the island, Caroline's corrupted soul appears again. She says, my memories are the key to your future. Yeah, as in, he'll sacrifice the ten cubes and they'll form the elixir of immortality and he'll become immortal. Anyway, Margaret is in the boat wanting the foghorn, so Jacob gives it to her and she makes a noise that sounds similar to the soundtrack, but less creepy. Then the locust comes and carries her off and Jacob looks inside the boat and finds the eighth black cube. It shows Jacob and Caroline on the boat and Jacob speaks for the only time in this game, telling her she has to leave. I guess he doesn't want his mother to die. Relatable. Anyway, we know she didn't leave as she was killed after all. That's the end of the eighth plague. Now for the second to last plague, darkness. It's night time now and the entire family has gathered in the tower and somehow Margaret is alive. Nicholas says, son, be prepared. The glorious day of the lake is coming. What is this day of the lake? Maybe it means that that's the day they find out who gets enlightened and who died, as I mentioned earlier. Anyway, in the hut, there is a painting with the caption, the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the lake comes, the great and magnificent day. A quote from the Bible. So maybe this is something where if the moon is red, then that means the next day is this day of the lake? Sure enough, after a weird puzzle, the moon just changes color immediately and then starts to literally bleed. Hilarious pun. Also, there is a box at the edge of the island, but Jacob can't open it because of the owl perched on it. So, with some keys, Jacob gains access to the top floor of the tower, which is three fire sconce torch thingies and some windows. Looking out of the window, there is a giant wooden owl statue, and Jacob somehow controls the flames, which makes the owl statue move. I'm not sure how he did that. Does he have telekinesis? Maybe. For example, an earlier puzzle involved Jacob basically taking control of a bird. Anyway, the giant owl statue scares the real owl away, and it flies away, letting Jacob open the box. Within the box is your mother's bones. Immediately, Jacob grinds up Caroline's bones for some reason, and this forms something called magical powder. You see, previously there was a bunch of things Jacob had to grind up, and they formed powders, and then the powders, when thrown into the fire, would cause star signs to appear. However, here, with the magical powder, when tossed into the fire, the whole fire just magically vanishes. And it's got the black cube inside, and the memory shows the family killing Caroline. She's tied to a stake and then burned to death with the family gathered around. And as she dies, all the black cubes are released, which are the ingredients of immortality they wanted. It's not really anything we didn't know already, but I like to mention something else. At the beginning, the family were imitating zodiac signs, and Nicholas was imitating Taurus, the bull. Then later, I think he's imitating a generic deer. The deer represents his later transformation to Mr. Deer, right? In Rusty Lake Hotel? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And if bulls also have antlers, maybe antlers are an ingredient of the elixir. Ah well, that's the end of that plague, and now we are at the final plague. It's called Death of the Firstborn. From the second black cube, we know that this refers to Jacob. But he isn't dead yet. The entire island seems to be in a festive mood. Everyone's doing fun stuff and Nicholas is playing drums on the top floor, confusing many players. 
Anyway, Nicholas tells Jacob, Tonight the lake will show her true self to us. Be ready. Perhaps saying that they will find out who will die. The other family members mention this too. After some puzzles, Jacob comes to the edge of the island where the well place has been replaced by the giant wooden owl statue with the well inside. The rim of the well has a puzzle and when solved, the water is drained. Jacob climbs down, finding a secret room. It's where the family's masks are. Each of the family members have their own boxes with masks inside, and when all the boxes are opened, another room is found, and it seems to be Caroline's secret lair from the fifth memory. Caroline's corrupted soul in the room, with her puzzle box. Her corrupted soul says, I have withheld the last memory, the last element of the elixir. Within the puzzle box is the final black cube, the memory is of Caroline basically talking to herself, somehow recording it on the black cube while wearing the owl mask. She says, my memories are the key, not only to the past, but also to the future. So she's saying that while one can view the past with the black cubes, they can also play a pivotal role in the future, the chance of either living forever or dying immediately. However, there is a layer at the back of the box which opens, revealing Caroline's masks, the owl mask, which can unlock the final achievement. We'll get to that. Anyway, Caroline's corrupted soul tells Jacob to turn around and descend into the great depths of the lake. Jacob tries to climb out of the well, but the family raises a rope trying to kill Jacob so they won't die. But Jacob swims out and finds all the family members saying it's time. He actually gives them all their masks and makes his way to the well where he sacrifices the final cube right before the family lowers the torches and burns the wooden owl. Jacob dies and then the game does a dramatic reveal showing all the elements of the elixir from the black cubes. And then Jacob appears next to Caroline's corrupted soul and they merge together creating Mr. Owl, an important character in the game. But I think the elixir went out of control. I think it enlightened other random creatures, which is how Harvey became immortal, and I believe the island became hell itself. But we can get into this when we talk about Rusty Lake Hotel. So this game was basically Mr. Owl's backstory, as it was one of the last games in the series. They put the backstory near the end. Well, there we go. I think that's kind of all of Rusty Lake Paradise, or at least it's all my theories. You can share your theories with me.